What's up, everybody? Oh, good. Oh, wow. I like you very much. Thank you very much. This is a good crowd. Uh, welcome to your panel, Deus Ex, Cross, Open Bionics, Augmented Future. How are you doing today, Comic-Con? What I want to do is commend you on coming to the most fascinating panel here. This isn't about some stupid TV show. It isn't even about some stupid video game, kind of. <laughs> but it kind of is. But you know, no, you know what I'm saying. Well, um, it's going to be about a video game, just not a stupid one. Exactly. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Laura Gallagher. Please give her a round of applause. Hi. Laura, of course, from Eidos Montreal. Great to be here. Thank you for being here, too. What do you do at Eidos Montreal? I'm the lead character artist on Mankind, uh, on the Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. So I've been working there for about uh, eight years and a half at this point. I started there in 2007 on the human revolution, um, pretty much near the beginning of that game, and I've been there since then, and I've been taking care of uh, the modeling of um, our characters, uh, and especially our main character, um, um, Adam Jensen is his Adam name. Adam Jensen. Thank you. Since she's, the beginning. A, she's been working so hard on it. Yeah, You've yeah. all been there. You just start to like forget names after a while, right? It's just so automatic and stuff. So It's like when you go to the gas station and you put the baby on top of the car and you start driving. We've all been there. It's forgetful. It happens sometimes. Uh, yeah. It's uh, great to be here. Thank you very much. I'm going to skip this person in the middle who doesn't matter. Go down here. She's the star. I want to introduce her last. Everybody calm down. Jeez. <laughs> Rounding out the panel down there. Sammy Payne, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Get in. You, got, you can't. Do, don't you be afraid of that microphone. I don't even need one. You, though, you got to get right on it. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Tell me a little bit about what Open Bionics is. Um, Open Bionics is a robotics company. Um, we make 3D printed bionic limbs uh, for amputees, and we're trying to make them look super cool and be very affordable. And this, exactly. this panel is going to talk about how that happened with Deus Ex, correct? Yeah. Okay. In and a really big way. Yeah, and I'd say way. in a really big way. Yeah. In the really big way is small fry right here, Tilly. <laughs> hey, Tilly, how are you? Good. She's 10 years old, everybody. <laughs> it's an accomplishment to live that long in America. We're all very impressed you've made it that far. <laughs> uh, Tilly, show them the arm. This is, look at, oh my gosh. <laughs> so to be clear, it's not a glove. No. You're you're controlling that with the muscles in your arm. Yeah. That's awesome. Is that awesome? Yeah. How does that? <laughs> what is that like for you? It's it's all right. It looks cool. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, go ahead. What do you got to say, Lauren? How do you feel when you have the arm on? I just feel awesome. <laughs> I feel like I don't need to hide and I feel like I can just show off. Show off right now. Move stuff. Do things. What? <laughs> I said feel free to show off right now. Do things. You can do whatever you want to do with it. You can wave at everybody. You're doing this. You're moving around. Does it feel, does it feel natural to you, Tilly? Yeah, it does. Yeah? <laughs> That's Tilly's favorite thing to do with it. Yeah. Look through it. Do the OK symbol. I appreciate that. I like that. Um, Laura, from the video game side, yeah. you're working on yes. the Deus Ex franchise. Indeed. How does it start? When you start the game, are you thinking about, well, Adam Jensen's using prosthetics. Maybe one day we should look into this, blah, blah, blah. Because most people are like, I'm going to make a video game, and then they make the video game, and then they just keep making sequels to it. Yeah, of course. Um, well, uh, I think the truth is when we started working on the human revolution like some eight or nine years ago, um, I don't think we ever thought that human prosthetics would come such a long way and so fast. Uh, you know, like uh, we've envisioned a future that was in 2027 and, uh, you know, in which uh, prosthetics are something that's very um, much um, that, that a, um, that's something that, uh, that, um, a lot of people have, but we thought that future was much further off than it wanted being. Like, I don't think that we've, that we thought that we would be here in 2016, that we would, we would uh, be seeing these sorts of things on, you know, people. And 
I mean, we've seen prosthetics before, right? They're not necessarily new of this year, but what's new is that they're so affordable now and that they're also so fashionable, you know? Um, like, the truth is, prosthetics used to cost a lot of money and they were always look like medical devices. Sure. There was no style to them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, we knew that this sort of future would happen at some point, but we didn't think it would happen so fast that it did, right? Um, I think we owe a lot of that to 3D printing, uh, which is pretty much the technology that you guys use at uh, Open Bionics. Um, and I think that, that 3D printing has um, evolved very fast throughout the years and made it so that now prosthetics are something that pretty much um, all the people that, that uh, are in need of those things can actually um, like make those at home almost, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we're, we're making all of these open source. Um, DSX has been really kind and allowed us to open source this design. So anyone can um, download this hand from the internet and then 3D print it at home on a desktop 3D printer, which is just insane. Like we've had people <laughs> in the US download their hand and then 3D print it and then wear it at home without any interaction with us. That doesn't sound like a good business model for you at Open Bionics. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like that's how you, you're closed up shop in six months. <laughs> uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but is that, is 3D printing the big jump that you see, Sammy? Is that what's happened and changed? I mean, like, for what Laura's talking about, making a game nine years ago and projecting, well, this is what it'll look like in almost 2030 to be here now. What was the change? What has happened? Um, I think it's two things. So 3D printing is one of them. So making them affordable and available, like 3D printing makes a big part in that. The other thing is the attitude change in society. So now we really respect being individual. We all really respect being unique and we all want to look different from one another and we celebrate those differences. Whereas in the past, everyone had to conform. Everyone had to look the same and you were made fun of if you were different. Now it's like really cool if you've got a robot arm. So there was, we, <laughs> we, had to, uh, we had to wait for that attitude change. So now everyone's really accepting and, and people are jealous of people who get to wear robot arms. So that, that's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a room full of people staring at you, Tilly, and they're jealous of your robot arm? <laughs> Do you want to give it to them? No. <laughs> so, well, chime in, Laura. Yeah, no, um, I was just going to say, like, I've heard uh, many comments about people saying, like, oh, please uh, get rid of my actual real human arm so that I, I can get, like, an open bionics arm and, like, uh, like, an arm like she has right now. And I think that's just awesome. And no, totally. Also a bit For scary, those, but very much <laughs> awesome. For those people, though, they could just paint their real arm. Like, they, could, they don't have to lose the arm. Well, there is, yeah, sure. I mean, you could get, yeah. I'm just saying, if Perhaps. you're one of these people out there, like, I want to invest in a robot arm, slow your roll. Think about what you might be able to do with paint on your real arm. <laughs> so, Sammy, m making these arms, how do they, how do they work? for some people in the audience, or maybe a moderator who doesn't fully understand <laughs> how Tilly's making the arm move. What's, what is going on? Okay, so we have um, EMG sensors on Tilly's muscles. So Tilly's just squeezing her muscles. If she squeezes her top muscle here, she's telling the hand to close. And if she squeezes her bottom muscle, she can tell the hand to open. If she wants to change what her fingers are doing, she can hold the top muscle open, um, and then she can ch change her fingers. So she's got multiple different movements she can do. Um, it's like perfectly designed for Tilly, so we took a 3D scan of her arm and then 3D printed a socket, so it's completely unique to her. And this is the actual size of a 10-year-old's hand. Um, so uh, we tried to do everything in proportion, so it's completely unique for her. Tilly, was it hard to learn how to use it? Not really, because yeah. it's just instructions. <laughs> I'm pretty good at instructions, I think. <laughs> Pretty easy to squeeze your muscles and relax, you know what I mean? Pretty much just like you do in real life. Huh? Yeah. She got it like straight away. Yeah. Like, we were really surprised um, because Tilly wore it for the first, this is only her third time wearing it. Oh wow. Um, and so usually it takes amputees a, a little while to get used to it and, and the perspective is different. Um, but Tilly was using it straight away and like picking things up and like throwing balls and it was, it was great. So then Laura, when you guys were setting off to do Deus Ex, yeah. Did you, did everyone get like a crash course on how prosthetics would work or were you coming up, were you like, were you interested in the real science behind it at that time or were you trying to extrapolate what it would be in the future? Uh, yeah, I mean like um, back in the day, I think that when we start working on uh, the uh, designs that would be in the video game, like we, 
we were basing a lot of the um, um, a lot of the things we did on actual prosthetics that would be you know in the world at that point in time, and uh, like I think it's actually uh, it, like it's weird because back in the day when we started working on uh, Deus Ex in like 2007, like we were actually designing things based off the real world, but now it's actually the other way around, right? Like now we have actual real prosthetics that are actually now based on the franchise that we've uh, worked on. So in a way we've just come full circle, you know? It's like we used to do things in the virtual space that was based on, uh, on the reality, but now it's reality that's actually based on the virtual space. Um, and I think that's actually a cyclical thing because the truth is um, when I was working on adapting uh, Jensen's arm for uh, Open Bionics, um, I've actually had to um, go back and start to uh, question like all of the smaller details that are on Adam um, on the arm of uh, um, uh, Jensen because the truth is like a lot of smaller details that were there uh, made sense in a virtual world but didn't make sense in the real world you know like there's yep. screws on there right and um, like I think screws I don't know how much people here actually do 3D like maybe you can raise your hand if there's anyone here that actually does 3D modeling um, if you guys have ever done hard surface work you know um, in uh, whichever program like you sometimes face a problem where you have a big flat surface and you're just not sure what to do with it, right? And one of the things that we do in 3D when we're not sure what sort of detail to put on something, we just put on a screw there, you know? <laughs> it's like, I don't know what to do. Put a screw I feel on. as if there is a lack of detail on this panel somewhere. I'll just add a screw somewhere, you know? And that's just one of the things that we just continuously do because the truth is, um, it doesn't matter, right, if there's a screw somewhere and it's not functional because you're in a virtual space. But now that, you, that we're actually building something that's going to be in real life, when I was actually working on this, I had to stop and actually ask myself the question, wait, like, is this screw that's on Adam Jensen's arm somewhere actually functional? Does it bring something, right? And I started looking around and looking at designs and, like, stuff from, like, real life, and I kind of realized that most things in life when they're expensive and they're sleek and you know like all of the screws are always hidden you know like people the uh, designers they always try and hide all of the screws that are there um, so essentially when I was producing the uh, um, version of uh, Jensen's arm that um, was uh, sent to a uh, open bionics I just removed all the screws I'm like nah screw the screws right we just don't need <laughs> these things anymore Besides, these guys are probably much better than I am at actually knowing where screws are actually supposed to be and are going to be functional on that actual arm because it is still um, assembled from parts of uh, from uh, parts that were uh, 3D printed. So, because of that, I just removed all the screws, and now going forward, I'm probably not going to put any screws at all <laughs> in any sort of 3D um, modeling that I do. I can't wait Going for the IGN forward? review of like, it, the, the prosthetics look so fake, there's no screws. There's no, yeah, they're yeah. being so lazy, exactly, there's no yeah. texture on his arm. Yeah. <laughs> what, did you guys just cut back on uh, like the cost of uh, modeling? You just removed all the screws? You're like, we just need something that's so in detail. But yeah, no, I, I just think that it's fascinating how uh, when we um, worked on the game, uh, um, like eight years ago, we were actually basing our designs off of things that were in in uh, real life, and now real life is actually based off of things that we did in, in uh, video games. And I think that's a, a cycle that's just going to keep on going. Mm -hmm. So, the, uh, the gap I want filled in for the audience that I don't understand myself is how does this relationship start? Is it you, is, Sammy? Do you guys reach out because you've seen the game, or do you guys find that Open Bionics is doing this, and you, the game people hit you up? How does it work? Um, so. I made, well, Open Bionics made a um, 3D printed hand that had five fiber optics running off it um, that flashed blue and it had loads of Swarovski crystals on it. Mm -hmm. um, and it went down really well with the people of the internet. And um, 
Like you, people of the internet. You people of the internet. It went down really well. And so all of these people on Twitter um, went crazy about it and then s started saying, you need to make an Adam Jensen arm, you need to make an Adam Jensen arm. And then they started tagging DSX into it. And there was like a Twitter campaign like held by someone who was like really keen for this to happen. Um, and then the guys got in touch with us and that's how it started. It was a really organic sort of community based thing. It was a very mutual thing. I don't think we know who contacted who first and it was kind of just a case of both people picking up the phone at the same time and then trying yeah. to like ring each other and then it's kind of busy on uh, the uh, end of the line because like that we'll other person is also trying to call you at the same time. Yeah. But that's kind of how it started, right? Yeah. So, Laura, what's the studio reaction then on your end when you see the flashing blue arm and this all starts happening? Well, we're like, wow, like, these are the sorts of things that we've anticipated with uh, the games that we've worked on for like the past years or so. And here's a company that's actually building these things in, in, the, in the real life, right? And I mean, the thing about these prosthetics that we have here is not just that they're that they exist, but it's also that they're affordable, right? Um, like, I think that's, that's probably the biggest um, thing that had to happen for prosthetics to become a bit more mainstream and to become more something that could actually be a fashion um, accessory. You know, like, the price of them had to go down, right? And I think that's what happened. Um, and so when we started seeing these arms around, we just realized that's kind of the future that we started um, envisioning with uh, Deus Ex like so many years ago is just coming to life. So I mean, I think we just really wanted to have this, this um, um, partnership happening sure. because it was just a natural progress, I think, for us at the studio. Sammy, talk to me a little bit about the nuts and bolts, no pun intended, of like, what's happening with the cost structure? We're saying they're affordable now. What does that number look like compared to what it was a few uh, years ago? So right now in the US, uh, prosthetics, bionic hands that are similar to Tilly's that have multiple functions um, can cost up to $125,000 for one, for one hand. Yeah. Um, I have a friend who paid that much for his hand. Um, they usually range between like $60,000 to $125,000. Okay. So we are aiming to get this one um, and ones like this down to around like under $5,000. That's what we're trying to do. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Is that where 3D printing comes in, that it makes it so easy? And, you yeah, know. definitely. And we've completely changed how they're made. Um, so traditionally, when Tilly was little, so she would have gone to a, a doctor and they would have taken a plaster cast which is like the traditional way to make prosthetics. We use, 3D, we use all 3D technology, so we use 3D scanning, and then we build the hand with 3D modeling, and um, we 3D print it. So the, the production time is so much faster. So Tilly would usually have to wait three months just to get the socket. We printed it in two days. So it's a huge difference in time and people's resources. That's awesome. Yeah. That you guys are doing great stuff. Thank you. <laughs> uh, is this common in the field right now? Like, are, are there more organizations, companies like yourself that are doing this, or are you guys cutting edge on it? It's pretty cutting edge. Yeah. Um, it's still not common. Hospitals won't do it. Um, clinics aren't doing it. Doctors aren't doing it. There are people who are experimenting with it. Yeah, you keep going. But, uh, there we go. Thanks. Um, yeah, so people are experimenting with it, but uh, yeah, it's not mainstream enough yet, which okay. is what we're working on. I, mean, I assume that's going to happen, right? Oh, for sure. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So then, Laura, doubling back to you, you guys are on board, you hear, see the campaign, they do this, and then they, do, do, do they turn to you? Were you thinking initially that you were just going to send them a screenshot of the arm and like, there you go, you make it, and then all of a sudden you have to design it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? I, don't, I mean, is that, was that one of your life goals ever, <laughs> to sit there and design a bionic arm? One of my life goals was to just send a screenshot to another studio and just say, here handle everything yourself. Um, no, the truth is that uh, like when we work in, a, th in a, a completely virtual environment like we do with uh, video games, we don't really care all that much about real life constraints, right? And therefore, um, like we have a lot of files and you know, like certainly I've been taking care of uh, Jensen's arms since the beginning of the franchise. Uh, so I know Jensen's every vertex and every uh, polygon that's um, on the character, and I knew that those files were way too 
dirty to send to someone who was actually going to use those to actually build something for for uh, real life. So uh, I kind of had to go, I don't want to say that I had to go back to the drawing board, but I really had to go back to all these files and just remodel all of the uh, Jensen's arm from scratch because the truth is like a lot of those details will not work in real life. You know, um, like for example, there's a lot of military stuff in Jensen's arms and somehow Open Bionics wouldn't let me keep those in for some oh, reason. Yeah. So they were like, now we have to remove the blade and stuff. She can't stuff. stun people. She can't sh sh shotgun stun them right away. Not right now. <laughs> maybe that's going to come at some point, right? Like Gen, you guys. Gen 2. Huh? Next version 2. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, that's perhaps one of the scary parts as well of, of having prosthetics that are beginning to be this advanced. It's just how... You know, like, as far as civilians are concerned, we're not, I guess, too worried for now. But, I mean, there will be a point, I suppose, when uh, the military will be interested in this sort of technology because the technology, you know, at some point, um, these sort of bionic limbs will probably outperform human limbs themselves, right? And that's both extremely exciting and also extremely scary at the same time. Um, but, I mean, back to the point, like, like I had to, uh, to, to pretty much um, re make all of the arm from scratch because the truth is it was just too dirty and you know it was clean for a video game but not clean for real life um so i mean there was a lot of work to be done there and also like we have a second arm that's uh what we call the franchise arm which is um a arm that's not adam jensen's arm it's actually a brand new arm i don't know if we have any pictures of that somewhere um but um like that one was just a brand new arm where we wanted to convey um different aesthetic, you know, while still keeping the, uh, like, the savior of the franchise, right? We, we wanted to have something that was both unique and bold and fashionable and that would convey both a, a sense of strength but also a sense of, of um, elegance in the uh, design, you know? So, it, like, I think the thing about um, prosthetics is that they shouldn't be just a medical device. They really should be a fashion, uh, fashion accessory and like something that people are proud to show off. Like, I think she is right now, right? <laughs> yeah. So then, well, and you can level with us, Laura. You're among friends. Oh, yeah. You go to work on this arm. Is this why the game got delayed? <laughs> <laughs> You were like, you guys got it from here. I'm going to go make this arm. You come back. You're like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to touch on that. Um, <laughs> so then what's it like? This is not the reason why the game got delayed. Uh, <laughs> I, I believe the game got uh, delayed because um, like, we're standing on the shoulders of a human revolution, and we just wanted to make uh, a product that was as good. Sure. And, you know... For those of you who have played uh, Deus Ex, I'm sure, considering the fact that you're here, it's probably most of you, but you can still raise your hand. Um, you can clap, too. Clapping's fun. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a uh, quality franchise, and there was no compromise to be had with that franchise, so that's why the game took the time it took to make. So then for you, though, what's it like to see the arm? In real life, amazing. It's yeah. uh, as a 3D artist, like you know. I mean, if I can even call myself that, um, I don't have any sort of tangibility usually with uh, my medium, right? Like those who are used to either painting in real life or like making actual sculpture or like even drawing to a certain extent. Like you're actually used to touching what you're doing and to like seeing what you're doing and like real life, but when you work in the 3D field, like, all too often, all you see is just a computer screen. Um, and I mean, in that sense, like, actually seeing that in real life is, is just probably the greatest gift that I can have as a, a 3D, um, as, as someone who works in a, a 3D, because it's essentially what I produce that's now in real life out there, and also changing the world, you know, as small of a change as it can be. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So then, Sammy, where do we all go from here? Like, is it just 
is it hopefully things are going to get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper? Is it the technology going to get better and better? Is that uh, where does it all work for you? Where do you think it's going? Um, it's just going to get better and better and better. Like the functionality, the look, everything's going to improve the weight. It's going to be lighter. It's going to be stronger. Um, it's going to be faster. It's going to have extra human functions, superhuman functionality. We did actually build the Tesla coil stun gun into one of the arms. Oh, that sounds terrible. That sounds like uh, a bad idea. <laughs> but we were told that we weren't allowed to bring it, so... <laughs> 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 um, yeah. I think I knew you guys were actually working on military stuff in secret. Yeah. Shh. I, for one, welcome our new overlord, Tilly. <laughs> <laughs> the first time she gets one that can like crush the wall in that room, I'll be like, oh, no. You've given her too much power. <laughs> Tilly, uh, w w what's it like for you to have this, but also to understand, I think, more, better than all of us where it's going, how fast it's evolving? Like, do, you, do you think about like, where in 10 years the technology is going to be? Yeah, I think in 10 years it'll be like, I'll be able to have a bunch of hands just in my closet. I could just go online shopping, go on the images, <laughs> and then I could just 3D print it and just have a bunch of hands in my closet, just so I can ready-made, so I just go out one day and be like, oh, this goes with this dress, let's, let's wear this. <laughs> that, that's the future. I can, I can picture you now in your Iron Man workshop. Where you're just like, you know what, I got a pink dress. I need a pink arm today, Jarvis. And <laughs> That's awesome. This whole panel's awesome. Did I, t I told you it was going to be a good one, right? I didn't lie. <laughs> Thank you very much, Star Trek man in the front. So for everybody on the panel, what haven't we talked about? What haven't I asked you? What, what, what about this process is something that's on the tip of your tongue? Well, I did talk about screws, and I really wanted to talk about screws. Nailed it. I, I think I've nailed that. Um, I am interested, though, in the, 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 the future implications, and I would like to pick uh, Samantha's brain as far as that's concerned. Like, where do you think things um, are going? But like, what sort of ethical questions do you see um, are going to come up like, in the future regarding human augmentations and prosthetics? Um, so it is a bit of an ethical minefield because we are receiving requests all the time for these bionic hands and we're receiving requests from people who have two hands. Um, there's, they're, they're jokingly saying, like, I want, I want to chop these off. But I think if there's a desperate enough fan um, out there, I might do it. Because um, wearable technology and bod body hacking and biohacking is a thing now. People have illegal surgeries where they implant technology under their skin so they can become part cyborg. This is already happening, so we're just a step away from someone taking a more drastic step, I think. Um, so these are, these are really big questions, and as prosthetics become more fashionable and, and they become closer to the, what the human hand can do, I think doctors are gonna have to be thinking a lot about what, where, what, what are the boundaries for selective surgeries. Um, is this a cosmetic surgery? Um, and then is that okay? If it's, it's, so, it's your body, you have the choice over it, and if you want to do it, why, why can't you? So yeah, I'm definitely not the one making the rules for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, for you guys right now at Open Bionics, how does it work? Are you inundated with requests from people looking for help? Are you, I mean, how big is your team? What's that look like? Yeah, so we're a team of five. That's not a lot of people. <laughs> um, we've been around for two years, and we're a very small company. We just started with two of us, and we've just, just got to five. Um, despite that, we've made these huge jumps in prosthetics and in robotics um, and in wearables like this. Um, but the requests that we're getting are worldwide. Um, it's a huge problem. Millions and millions of people face this problem of having amputations and then not having devices available for them because they're too expensive or because they're too big. Like kids especially don't have good bionic hands. They don't exist because manufacturers can't make them small enough. Mm. Um, this is the smallest, definitely the smallest bionic hand with that, that amount of functionality um, made. And um, so we're, we're just, trying, keeping going, keep pushing. How did you get hooked up with Tilly? We put a call out on our Facebook page um, saying we're looking for people to test with who's like brave enough to join us. And um, Tilly, Tilly volunteered. <laughs> um, we got um, hundreds of, of volunteers through, loads of kids. Um, so it's a really big, huge problem. Tilly, were you scared at all to do it? You, she said you're brave enough. They're gonna <laughs> do experiments on you and things. <laughs> I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs>
And then for you, what, what was it like, Tilly? I mean, to go in, to go through this process of getting the cast and then getting it on for the first time. I don't really mind because I've had lots of practice with hands because I used to work with Touch Bionics and then Open Bionics came along and I'm kind of used to it, I don't really mind. Sure. What, what are the prosthetics you've used before like? Um, when I first got my hand it was like a little hook thing and I looked like a puppet because I had to pull strings and laughed. It wasn't very good. That's not fashionable. No, you wouldn't want a closet full <laughs> <Yeah>. of those. <laughs> and then there was the Touch Bionics one, which looked really realistic, but... No. Nah. no <laughs> I like to be unique. <laughs> <laughs> and now you have this awesome Adam Jensen black and gold arm. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely a step up, right? Yeah. 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 So. These files are going to be open source, right? Everyone's going to be able to grab those after it? Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So all of, our, all of our designs are open source. We have a pretty big developer community. Um, so you, you just take the files, improve them, share them with your community, do whatever you want to them, really. Um, print them for someone. Um, and yeah, we're, the reason why we're open sourcing this is because we want it to progress faster. We want to see where this can go and how fast it can get there. Um, and the only way to do that is by opening up all these, all these technologies. Um, that makes innovation happen faster. It, it, if you have a crowd of people working on a problem, your problem's gonna get solved faster. How complicated, I understand the 3D printing part because I could wrap my head around that. But how complicated is it then to wire it and do all that stuff? It's pretty complicated <laughs> making a robot hand. It's the most complicated part is uh, the human interface, the human robot interface. Um, the technology isn't as advanced as it could be, and we're, we're waiting for the technology to sort of catch up with how, how we see the future of these limbs working. Um, we, yeah, I don't know. We're just really excited by it, really. The future of of course. How far out do you think the technology is from catching up? Because you know, it's like that thing people talk about, you know, computers, right? That every, what is it, six or 18 months, the computer like doubles in terms of power and what it can do. Well, considering how fast we've grown in, in two years, like the whole technology, the whole prosthetic technology in two years has grown amazingly fast. Um, I think it's not gonna be a long time because loads of people are working on it now. When we first started this, weren't, there weren't that many people working on it. Now there's loads of people working on it across countries. So it's, it's brilliant. And then. I guess my final question, because we want to open it up to you. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on. Well, <laughs> that's, that's the speed you have, Nick. The one, oh, good Lord. Uh, what can people like us do? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I definitely cannot 3D print anything, nor can I wire anything, nor can I design anything, nor so, can I crush a walnut in my hand. Like, what, can, <laughs> what, do we, what do we do to help progress things forward? So, do we have any artists in the room? Yeah, designers, 3D modelers, nice. So um, we're basically looking for people to come up with, with designs, like we're taking the first steps into making these look fashionable. Um, we want amputees to have as much choice as possible for around what their limb could look like. Um, so we're looking for people to contribute designs, open source them, say like, look, I've, I've designed this awesome robot arm, you can build it, you can have it, it's yours. Um, that's, that's what would be really helpful. And then just spreading the word, letting people know that um, these are open source and anyone can work on them. Okay. We can do that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, if you have a question, please come line up with Nick Scarpino. He'll gladly interview you and get you all set up there. Oh, man, a, good, a lot of people do. Good. I told you this was going to be an interesting panel. Nobody believed me, though. Did you believe me? Yeah. You're a liar. <laughs> a line at 7.30 for this panel? That doesn't seem like a great uh, use of your time. Like, you could have walked in. <laughs> True. Best seat in the house. Nick, who do we have first? Greg, we have Centuro from Mexico. Oh, hello. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Doing good. And congratulations first. You guys are the joining point between a dream and a reality. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I want to start. So first, a big clap for that. Thank, Thank you. you. And the second one is about, so I work with animals. I'm working more or less similar to what you're doing with uh, prosthetics, with mm -hmm. 3D printing and um, animals. And you guys' uh, neural interface, with, uh, it, it is based on communication and learning. Mm -hmm. But with animals, we cannot do that. 
you cannot tell them flex this muscle and have the EMG interpret that or the intensity of that to movement. And do ha are you guys thinking about in the future approaching a point where you do not need that, where your interface can learn the stimuli just by uh, interpreting the EMG and just having it flexed and be more natural and more uh, adaptive because f uh, that big point is a big gap that we have with animals. And also uh, encouraging you guys to, uh, to do that because it's not just helping people. You're yeah. helping almost every living animal in this planet. Mm -hmm. Just with this technology and influencing us and uh, stimulating us, you guys are uh, helping everybody in this planet. That's very cool, thank you. Um, so I think where the best interface um, what, and where the future is in this space, maybe for animals, I've never really looked into that, um, but is brain implants. So having a prosthetic fused to the bone mm -hmm. and as, uh, be, become part of the body. Um, Tilly's isn't, it's just like yeah. placed over her skin. Um, and then having a brain implant. So it's not a conscious thought that you have to flex your muscle, it's you just think, I want to move my hand wow. or foot or paw, and um, it happens. Okay. So I think that's the future. Okay. Thank you very much. How far do you think we are from that future? We're at it now. Um, researchers are, are doing that. Yeah. That's, it is a thing. It's just very early, very, sure. very, very early stage. I think only one person in the world has had it done. Um, it's been very successful. Um, and they're, they're, rolling, they're trialing it in Australia and uh, I think Switzerland. Okay, great. Nick, Would his next? family name be Jensen? By the way? <laughs> it wasn't Adam Jensen, no. Oh. <laughs> we have Eric from Dallas. Hi, Eric. Hi. I was wondering, y'all talked a lot about uh, the future of prosthetics and how y'all are doing the 3D printing arms. It, are, are you going to uh, move on to legs or other things, or does that offer more complications like load bearing and things like that? Thanks for the question. Um, you're right. It does, it does have a different spec of challenges and uh, complications, but we are looking at making affordable bionic limbs. We're looking at how 3D printing might be able to help innovate that prosthetic industry as well. Um, we're also looking at how to make l uh, lightweight and affordable exoskeletons for people who have suffered strokes. Um, so there's a lot in the wearable robotics, assistive technologies that can be improved, we think, by um, 3D printing and making stuff affordable, essentially. Fantastic, thank you. Thanks. Nick, who's next? Alex. Miami. It's <laughs> how he introduced himself to me, and I was like, is that your name? I was like, is that your name? Miami. Alex, Miami. Hello, everyone, thank you for having us. Um, Lauren, I just wanted to say, um, I don't really see any reason why you should be ashamed of calling yourself a 3D artist. I mean, if you're in the interactive media industry and you're part of aesthetic design, you know, you're an artist. True uh, story. Woo! Well, <laughs> thank you. Um, Laura, 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 Laura. I think the thing is, um, I think there is a lot that comes with the term artist. And I don't know that I'm deservant of that term yet. I mean, uh, there's a lot that goes into 3D modeling. I mean, there's some people will call us designers because we actually have to work. You know, there's there's a lot of elements of um, design that that we also have to think of and incorporate into our work. So, I mean, um, well, thanks. You know, like if you're saying that, it's just that it's hard not to be to feel very modest when you consider just much bigger. Um, um, artists are there, or like people who have made their mark, you know, in a way that's way bigger than um, I think I will ever, you know, like when you look at people, you know, like the oh. great painters or like the great sculptors or like these sorts of things, I'm, I'm kind of standing on the shoulders of giants in a way, sure, and I don't know that I could ever be up to their level, so calling myself artist, I think, is something that, that um, I'm not sure I'm deserving of that term yet. But sure. I Thank you. believe the project you're part of is, uh, is fairly large, so I believe you deserve it. And Samantha... Thank you very much. No problem. Um, Samantha, uh, have you felt any, received any backlash from some of these companies that are charging $60,000 plus for prosthetics? Because, I mean, in some ways, some of these companies, while they're not necessarily for profit, I mean, they, they need uh, to kind of fund themselves. Mm -hmm. And a company like yourself that's, you know, looking to... Uh, to bring it down to a much more affordable level, uh, what backlash have you faced from the industry as it stands with what you're doing? Um, 
So we have faced some questions, but as soon as people ask us those questions and we give them the answers, they usually feel much better. Um, the reason why prosthetics in the US, especially bionic cans, are so expensive is because of insurance companies. I mean, the, the US healthcare system is completely different to, like, yeah, I won't go there, but. <laughs> <laughs> I like, yeah, I like how you said different. That wasn't the word I was going to use. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's the, it's the insurance companies, which is why we want to like completely change how um, amputees go and get these devices. We're not going to go through insurance companies. They can, you know, go away. Um, and we're going to sell directly to amputees using 3D scanning. We can do it all ourselves. We don't need to. We, and it's at such a low price now. It's, um, it's worth it. it. There's no point going through insurance companies. All right, so you've never really faced any barriers uh, trying to do what you're, you're doing? Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> um, no, we're, we're currently going through, we have to go through some FDA procedures um, to make sure that the, the, the materials are safe on the skin. It's all fairly um, re like normal regulatory procedures. Um, we, had, we had a little iffy response from prosthetists who were really worried that we were going to completely take their jobs, um, but that's not the case. Um, prosthetists will still be needed. They need to make sure that the socket is really comfortable and, and that it's breathable. And so we're not going to be taking people's jobs away. Uh, we're just trying to make things easier and faster. Thank you. Thanks. Next up, we have Brian from Orange County. The OC. The OC, right, yes. Hi. So assume that I get a solid gold but prosthetic arm on credit, would it be legal for a, and I default, would it be legal for someone to repossess that solid gold arm? Ooh, tough question. <laughs> I'm gonna say no, I don't know. <laughs> if you don't make the payments on it, they can repossess anything. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I may be very shameful now, but I am gonna plug Deus Ex and say that in May Kind of Ided, that's the sort of questions we like to ask inside the game. When's the game coming out? August 23rd. That's soon. <laughs> it's in a month from now. <laughs> hey, Greg, this is Andrew from Scotland. Hey, Andrew. Hey. A question for Samantha. Um, as Tilly gets bigger and bigger, do you have plans to kind of upgrade the arm and then obviously grow it as she grows? Yeah, of course. Um, that's why we're using 3D printing and it's so amazing and 3D scanning. So uh, 3D scanning takes about two minutes. You just like pop a 3D scanner on the back of an iPad or a smartphone. Um, literally takes two minutes as long as Tilly's staying still. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we can print it overnight, print a hand um, in 48 hours and you can just measure up, size it up as you go in, in your 3D modeling. So it's actually really simple to to grow it as Tilly grows. And how often is it getting replaced? So traditionally, it's um, as Tilly's growing, it's like for small children, essentially, it's every six to 12 months. Sometimes it's two, twice in a year. Um, it depends on their rate of growth, um, which is why prosthetics right now for kids are really, really expensive and they don't really do them because that would just, that cost would be so unachievable. Like Tilly's last arms, I think cost like 36,000 pounds for the pair, which is, imagine having to, pay that twice a year. That's huge. It's really huge. So yeah. And Tilly, if you want it to, can your right arm be stronger than the left one? Can you crush a can? <laughs> um, I don't think it's that strong yet, but maybe in the future. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. She'll punch through walls at some point. I was going to say. <laughs> Sammy, be very careful in the future. Yeah. You haven't seen her angry Tilly yet. seems balanced now, but I don't know. <laughs> Hey, Greg, this is Mike from L.A. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Uh, thanks for doing this panel. It's great. Uh, Laura, thanks for what you and your team has done with Davis X and that mythos you guys have developed over the years. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's uh, our pleasure, believe me. And like, the truth is, like, when we see this in real life, we just feel as if all the work that's been going into it has been worth it. You know? like, I think that video games are more than just about making... Um, entertainment, they can actually change the world, and I think this is a proof of that. So. Right, definitely agree. Tilly, you're awesome, and you're going to be a great spokesperson in the future for <laughs> prosthetics. Thanks. Uh, so my question's for Samantha, though. Um, so I've been involved in rapid prototyping for well over a decade, so I stay on the pulse of 3D printing and stuff like that. What are you guys doing at Open Bionics to uh, reach out to companies like 
carbon or new pro 3D, some of the pl that are doing the new, new polymers and things like that? We're not doing anything like that. Really? Yeah, we are. The, what we're waiting for and what we've been experimenting with and hacking together on our 3D printers um, are multi-material 3D printing. We think that's going to be the biggest benefit for making yeah. a strong hand that's super light. So you're talking about like uh, carbon fiber inlay and stuff like that? No, mostly we're talking about um, like a flexible, we want something that's grippy, so like a silicon outer, so we can pick up bottles and really hold it well. Then we want uh, a strong inside material, like a bone, essentially, okay. mimicking a bone. And then another flexible material for the joints. Um, we think that this way it'll, you'll have all the properties of the human hand, mm -hmm. um, but it'll also be light because the weight is a huge issue with bionics. Okay. Are you working with Object on, on anything like that? No, because the reason why we're not working with any of these big companies is because you know their technology is quite expensive. Sure. Um, we, we literally use the lowest cost and uh, desktop 3D printers. So okay. we're at the moment, we're using Ultimaker 2 3D printers okay, cool. um, with a flexi head, because um, these are flexi hands and yeah. So the, this material that Tilly's arm is made out of currently, what is that? This, so the bottom of Tilly's hand is um, 3D printed in one, one piece and it's got living joints. It's made out of a material called Ninja Flex. Oh, Ninja Flex, okay. Um, and yeah, it's a pretty cool name, isn't it? <laughs> and the It's a cool material too. <laughs> yeah, it's a really great yeah. material. And the top of the hand is uh, PLA. Very cool. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. This is Frank from San Diego. Hi. Um, so I wanted to sort of go back to the conversation about the moral and ethical um, implications of all of this stuff. Uh, and I guess something I've been thinking about is how more and more our identities are being translated into virtual and now actual like mechanical contexts. Um, and so I guess I wanted to ask you guys what your thoughts are on what that means for sort of existing identities like race and gender and how as this technology evolves that will sort of reformulate or change like how will that impact how society works and how it's structured. That's a big question. <laughs> um, so I think um, the hardware will evolve with, with our attitudes, like as it has been doing. So prosthetics is actually a really good industry for, for what you're talking about. Um, you know, they used to look, it used to be really important for amputees to blend in and try to show, pretend that they had an existing arm by wearing cosmetic covers and things that didn't even move, even though it would be really uncomfortable for them to wear. Um, and now we have arms that look like this, that are like beautiful objects, and they're, they're almost like little masterpieces. Um, and I think it will just, it'll continue to grow, you know, as, as your expressions change, and these are all open source, so there's nothing stopping you from like updating the arm and turning it into your favorite color, turning it into your kind of style, um, and then wearing it. And I think you'll find that when you wear it out, the reaction you'll have is, oh my God, that's amazing. Like when, Tilly, when Tilly's out and about with this, people will pass me like, like double take, and they're not like double taking because they think, oh, she's missing an arm. They think, oh my God, that's, that looks amazing. So yeah, so I think how it will evolve. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, that's it. I think that. <laughs> Thank you. This is Elijah. Where is he from? Oh. <laughs> Fontana. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, um, my question's for Samantha. Um, I had a question as um, to what advice you would give to someone who hopes to work in the bionics industry one day and what you would suggest to me for what fields I should look into and what places, I guess what areas of the bionics field need the most help? Need the most help? Okay, this is great. <laughs> um, EMG sensing, that needs to come on leaps and bounds so we can give amputees a, a much easier control method. So at the minute, Tilly's operating with just two channels, but there's a wealth of muscle mass here. So if we could pick out those individual signals, Tilly could like move her fingers individually with no problem. She wouldn't have to like double tap a, a muscle. Um, so I think EMG needs a lot of work and that would be great. And as far as getting into this industry, I'm, I'm sure you're very creative, you're here. Um, just make stuff, start, start tinkering with things. Um, it's by like downloading the designs and playing with it that you realize, okay, this is where it could be improved. Right. This, and then just start building it and start sharing your work. One of the biggest growth factors w for us was sharing our ideas. Like we wouldn't be here right now if we hadn't started sharing very early on and getting a lot of feedback from the amputee community. Um, and the other really big thing is work with the people you're working for. So if you're an artist and you want to help um, the prosthetics industry, work with the people that are wearing the prosthetics. They are the best people that are gonna tell you, this is a bad idea, like that's completely <laughs> useless. Um, and they'll tell you like, this is a great idea and this is what I need. 
Um, so I think that's the best way to, to do it. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> hey Greg, this is Alicia from San Diego. Alicia, you have the honor of being the final question. Ooh, and the only girl to ask a question. <laughs> um, I don't see gender, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Um, so my, my question is for both Tilly and Samantha. So Tilly, how has the arm helped you in everyday life so far? And then Samantha, what, 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 what do you see is kind of the, where, where do you see your, your products going in the next couple of years in terms of helping people um, live better in their, in their daily lives through with, with prosthetics? Mm -hmm. um, so I should probably say, first of all, that Tilly has probably worn this arm for less than three hours <laughs> okay. so it's not had a chance to um, be taken home or you know really used in a in a really meaningful way yet um, and I'll let Tilly answer that one in a second but um, as far as what we're working on and how we see things changing and what what we want to see happen at the moment Tilly has a really good control over this she's very good at using it but she can't feel anything that she's picking up so she's got no sense of if this if she's grabbed this ball um, and it's a little bit wonky she can't feel that it's slipping. Um, so we were working on pressure sensors in the fingertips to give her some feedback. At the, she's got some feedback. We've got a vibration motor, so she knows which grip she's in. But we want to make it um, as lifelike and as easy to use as possible. Um, so in the next couple of years, we'll be adding those features. We've got bionic hands that have lights in for kids. We've got bionic hands that have sounds in, so you can like play your favorite song in, on it. Um, we, we basically just want to continue being really creative with what these hands can do, what they can look like. Like we, We're not restricted by anything. We can make it do or look however we want it to. Um, and then the next, thing, the next step is obviously legs and branching out to other parts of the body. All right, for my question, um, it's like Sami said, I've only wore it for like le less than three hours, but I can throw a ball. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> before we let everybody go, Sammy, I heard before there's a panel coming up you wanted to talk about, right? Yes, so um, you'll you probably be interested as you're here, but there's in uh, New York, there's going to be the Human by Design Conference, and we will, I will be there talking about selective surgeries and body hacking, and there'll be lots of other people there who have embedded technologies who aren't who don't have disabilities or aren't indifferent, but they have chosen to have extra bits of tech embodied for fun or for art. Um, and so that's happening in August. And yeah, join, join us if you can. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, please give Laura, <laughs> Tilly, Sammy a round of applause. Thank you all for coming out. Have a great Comic-Con. Bye, Deus Ex. <laughs>